I got an email this week from somebody I did not know. Now, I know of their company. It was a woman. I know of their company, but I didn't know... I didn't know who they were. I just knew the name of the company. I've never interacted with this person. I didn't know them, you know, and they've never, they've never interacted with me online. So this person is the owner of a business pretty much everybody knows. It's a fairly large name within the sewing community. It's been around for a while. And, you know, I, but I, I, I've never really, um, I've never been a customer of this business. To be completely honest, this, this sewing related business does not sell anything I'm interested in. I don't really like their, what they sell. I don't agree with their business model. Uh, so it's nothing I've, it's nothing I've ever talked about. It's nothing I've ever promoted. I've never used any of their products or talked about them just because we didn't really cross paths and I just didn't really have like a reason. I, but, but again, I, it's not a business that I'm a customer of because I just don't, I'm not into what they do. So again, you know, everybody can do their own thing within the sewing community. I just, you know, kind of do my own thing. Um, I, I've had, so when I first started out doing this, I've been doing this for seven years. I've been in this game for a while. I've been sewing for about 10 years. And when I first got into doing like uh, sewing content, I had I talked with a couple people that had been in the industry longer than I had. Uh, one of the, and they both gave very very accurate advice to what I've experienced myself. Uh, the first person told me the sewing and crafting community of businesses they do not have deep pockets for marketing, so they're very cheap and they're not going to offer you like, like any real compensation for partnering up with them or doing sponsored videos or doing any sort of collaborations. And that person was spot on. I found that has, been, that has matched my experience to a T. It's been frustrating, I, you know, not that I've really tried to just focus on sponsorships because I really don't here. Uh, I just find it to be more hassle than it's worth. I would like to be able to build this business up in another way that doesn't rely on sponsorships or trying to like, you know, get that to get, get that type of financing. The other issue I have with that is that when you have sponsors, when you have companies that you are working with, inevitably you put yourself in a situation where you have less freedom where you have to worry like, hey, if I say this one thing, my sponsor might drop me or, uh, you know, I might only be able to use this brand's scissors in my videos if they're a sponsor and I can't use X brand. Um, you also have to worry about them having, like a pretty much all of the companies or brands or businesses that have tried to do things with me, they've all wanted an unreasonable control over the situation. They wanted non-disparagement clauses, so I could never say anything remotely negative about the company. I could not, I did not have the freedom to say whatever I wanted. They wanted uh, approval over the content. So to me, that was a boundary and a, a situation that I'm not really comfortable with. I think one of the appeals that you have and one of the things you like about my channels is that I, I say what I say and I'm, I often have pretty unpopular opinions or, uh, th or say things that might ruffle some feathers. I'm fine with that. I don't care. Uh, this channel is for you and this channel is for me. This channel is for us. And I don't really care about what business X says or that they think, you know, maybe I shouldn't have said this or whatever, whatever. So I, I built this channel and this brand my way and without really any help. And I think there's, I think that's one of the reasons why it's been somewhat successful is because I, I've been doing a different business model. I have an Etsy shop, so I don't have to rely on sponsors. In fact, PS, the Etsy shop is the sponsor of today's live stream. So sewing so report Etsy shop, curated fabric, sewing supplies. 
So pretty much, pretty much everything you need. So I use a lot of the stuff in the shop in live streams and videos. So this is stuff I actually use. I pick stuff I like. So, hey, just a quick plug. But the thing I want to talk about is you might have, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably have some idea. So I will get messages, DMs, emails quite frequently from other business owners. And they're asking me what, for what's essentially free work. Um, it's usually always about social media or YouTube. Those are the two things that I think people see and they're like, oh, well, she might be able to help us out with these areas. So if you aren't aware, before I did this YouTube channel full time, I spent fifth, over 15 years as a television news producer. So I used to work at local TV stations. I also worked at CNN for about five years. So I have a lot of time logged in as an industry veteran in the media industry. And, you know, that's what I used to do before, before this. Now, I don't think that really necessarily helped me with all of this. I think I, ha I really had to find my own path and really eschew a lot of the things, a lot of the bad habits I picked up from working in broadcasting because I think a lot of the things I did in that previous life really don't work for YouTube. So, but people see that, like they see I used to work for CNN and they see I used to be a TV producer. And I think to them, they're like, oh, you know, we need, we need to talk to her. We need to like, uh, you know, get her to help us out or something. So this is, this is something that's become a pattern I'm seeing in terms of how people interact with each other within the sewing and quilting and crafting industry is that I think there's a real issue with businesses feeling entitled to another business's time and energy. And I just want to say, I really hate that shit. I think it's really, really disrespectful and pretty audacious for any business to expect another business to work for them for free. Like, really? Really? And so I want to go back to the advice I was given when I was first starting this out. The other person I had talked to had been in this business for a while, and they also said, they told me a long time ago, businesses will feel entitled to free advice from other businesses. She said it had happened to her a lot. Like, people would... So she said that... Um, people would approach her kind of under like a friendly guise, like, hey, let's be friends, you know, let's help each other out. You know, Gail's helping Gail's. And that's, I'll get to that in a little bit, but she said that she would get a lot of people who would approach her under the guise of being friends. They would ask her a lot of business-related questions, like, how did you do this? How did you build your business? What do you, you know, what, what are your suppliers? And she actually said she had people steal her business model. I'm not kidding. She said that she had, at one point, this woman said she had somebody working for her. Um, she got pretty close within the business. They had her pretty involved with the operations. And that person literally screwed them over by, and this is a pretty small business. This person is fairly well, well known. They're not in the business anymore. They've since left. But this a woman told me that one of her employees literally left her took all of her trade secrets and business information over to another business, and then they copied her business model exactly. And I'm like, you've gotta be freaking kidding me. Like, who, who does that? Who does that? So she told me that story a long time ago, and I found that to be also very, very accurate in terms of what I've experienced uh, firsthand. Um, I've talked about this. I actually, in my Instagram stories today, I linked a video I did a while ago about influencer marketing. And I did talk about this before. I've legit had other businesses hit me up and they've, they've literally outright asked me to work for them for free. Like, I'm not joking. Like, I've had quilt shops email me and say, hey, we'd love to talk to you about our social media marketing uh, you know, could you, could you talk to us on the phone? Um, and I'm like, I wrote back and I'm like, look, I, you know, I really don't have time for that unless it's a comp, you know, unless, unless this is a compensated uh, situation where I'm being paid. 
And they actually wrote back, we were hoping you would you would just do it for free. And I'm like, are, are you kidding me? Are you joking with me? Like, look, if I know you and I've, I'm, I consider you a friend, I've had interactions with you, I know you follow me. If you ask me a business-related question or something kind of about like YouTube, I would be happy to like give you some you know, quick advice. I've also done videos dedicated to that. I've done live streams where I've talked about YouTube. I've also done interviews with other channels where I've shared about my YouTube story and what I what I did to get here. So I'm not I'm not trying to be cagey about it and I'm fairly open about giving honest advice about making your way in the social media realm. Um, but that's more like for people I actually, you know, again, also these people could have looked up that, those videos, and none of them do. So, again, if I know you, like, if any of you in the chat here, like, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with my audience. I know all of the people who comment. I know who shopped with me on Etsy. I know all of the people who are up in this chat and are here all the time. Like, I, you know, I've done this long enough where I know... Who I know who's left comments on videos. So I'm, if one of you reached out to me, I would recognize you and say, oh, that's Lisa, or oh, that's uh, making dreams come true, or that's Debbie. And if you came to me, and I know that you've supported me throughout the years, I would be more than happy to give you a little bit of my time, or at least respond to you and share some resources or do something like that. But what's happening to me over and over and over again is that I will get people who I've, never heard of before, people who have never interacted with me before, who have never, like, they don't subscribe to the channel, they've never left a comment on a video, they don't even follow me on Instagram, and they're business owners, I will, like, this happens quite a bit, they'll reach out to me, and they will, like, they will ask me to help them for free, and that I find really annoying. Uh, so I did post about this on Instagram yesterday. You know, hey, it is what it is. I, And what bugs me about this is that I feel like those same people who are doing this to, and if it's happening to me, I think it's happening to a lot of other people in this space. I think, I think women especially are very willing to do this to other women. I think one of the issues is that I think inherently as women, we feel this need to be people pleasers and we want to be nice. We want to be very helpful. And I think, if anything, women are the first to sacrifice themselves for someone else. I'm not saying that men don't do this too, but I think this is especially prevalent in more women dominated areas that kind of people will approach you under the guise like, hey, we need to help each other out. You know, women helping women, sisterhood, all that bullshit. But what they're really doing is they're not actually, they don't actually want sisterhood. They don't actually want to help each other out. What, what it really is, is a one business trying to take advantage of another business. And it's under this guise of helping each other out. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm not putting up with that crap before. I have fallen for this before. I have been taken advantage of. I've had people ask me ridiculous things and, and some of them I've actually done. And I'm like, looking back and I'm like, why, why did I do that? Uh, so if this can be any help to you, if you are also a, a business or if you find this is happening to you, I want to say it's okay for you to say no. It's okay for you to not respond to a ridiculous DM or a ridiculous email. It is totally fine for you to say, this is something I would charge for. Are you willing to pay it? Because... I think what's happening is that we are undervaluing ourselves. We are undercutting us and everyone else. And the more people are willing to do this, the more people are going to take advantage of. I feel like a lot of these people that do this to other businesses, they're doing it because they can. And they've obviously had some success with this tactic in the past. And they're like, oh, well, you know what? I did this before and you know it worked. So I'm going to do it to a bunch of other people. And that really pisses me off. I'm not, I will say this outright, if you are one of those people, you're a business, and you, I don't know you, and you send me an email with something that's asking me for a favor or asking me for free work, you're, you ain't getting a response. 
And I will blast you on social media. I will not name the, the person. And the person I talked about ye yesterday and the day before, the intention was not to create beef or, uh, you know, like cause drama. The reason I posted about it was because this is a pattern that keeps happening over and over again. And I did not want to point out that specific individual, like, by name or name the company because that's not really the important thing. I also think out of respect, I don't want to, my other, my intention was not to have the mob come after that person, but to say that this is a problem. And this is a problem that's been happening to me. This is a problem that's been happening to others. And I just don't think it's, I don't think this is okay. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> you asking... Like, that's the thing. If you are trying to make genuine business connections or genuine connections in, in period, when you're first reaching out to the person, don't ask them for something like right off the bat. Just say, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so. This is what I do. You know, just wanted to say hi and say, I really appreciate what you do or something like that. I think that's a good way to go about it. But when you are reaching out to someone for the very first time and already you're asking them to do something for you, that really rubs me the wrong way. I don't like it. I'm not going to indulge you. I'm, I, and quite frankly, that tells me right away, you're not someone I want to associate with you or your business. So if you do that to me, I, you're going to kind of be on my list if you know what I'm saying. So, so the person who did this this week, um, I had done a video a while ago after I'd hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube uh, talking about some of the issues that I was unknowingly doing to my channel, the harm it had caused, uh, some of the things I'd been doing wrong with my channel. And I shared a little, little bit about, um, you know, kind of getting back on track and what I'm going to be doing differently in terms of content strategy, in terms of how I present videos, live streams. I started this channel just for live streams. Um, and I also talked about the fact that I had paid for a YouTube consultation with someone who I felt had legitimate credentials in this area that I really felt could offer me some some advice. And they did give me some really great things to take away and things I could do. So I had done that video and I will say this, um, since I've hit, in the short time, since I've hit the 100,000 subscriber mark and got the, the silver play button here, I've had some people kind of coming out of the woodwork um, to be like, oh, hey, you know, whatever. And I feel like this individual was was one of those people. I think um, they saw that I had 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. They saw that video. And they also saw that I uh, had, you know, gotten the YouTube consultation. Uh, so here's what happened. So I got an email from another woman who owns a business. Everybody, like pretty much everybody knows what this business is. Uh, this business is much larger than mine. I'm a solo operation. I don't have hired help. I don't have that luxury. I work very hard. I don't have employees. I don't have like a separate building. I do not make that much money here on YouTube. Enough for me to do it, but I'm not a wealthy individual. I have made a lot of sacrifices in order to continue this venture. And it's something I need to be, need to be very protective of. This woman who reached out to me, uh, they've been in business for a while. I did not know this person. I checked out their website. This business has a, at least 11 employees. They have a full-time videographer on staff. And uh, th so they have a, but like, so they obviously have a much bigger business than me. I'm, I'm a hundred percent certain they make a lot more money than I do. And yet they're reaching out to me, a business that's much smaller than them. Um, so they emailed and they said, hey, I saw your video about where you were talking about your YouTube uh, struggles. And they're like, well, you know, I, you know, I, they're like, I really, that really resonated with me. I, I like making videos too, blah, 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 blah. And then they also said, uh, you know, I'm really looking for, uh, you know, like, I don't really know any other sewing YouTubers. Uh, you know, could we maybe set up a time? I'd love to uh, talk to you for about, you know, 30 minutes uh, just to, quote, unquote, 
share what we've learned along the way. So, okay, let me kind of break this down for you. Yeah, because this email just, like on the surface level, you're like, oh, they're just being friendly and they want to make a YouTube friend and maybe chit chat about, about YouTube, you know, whatever. You might be like, you know, hey, maybe on the surface, um, you know, that might be okay. And I've fallen for this before, but here's, so here's what, when you kind of read between the lines and when I kind of analyze the situation more, um, I've been around for seven years. This person has never reached out to me before. They do not follow me on Instagram. Their business does not follow me on Instagram. They watched my videos, but they did not leave a comment on the video. They didn't say, hey, thank you for that. I really appreciated you sharing about that. Um, they also were not familiar enough with my content to know that I really hate those sort of emails. So it was very obvious from the correspondence and just from um, the email itself that she really hasn't watched a lot of my content. She's not very familiar with me. She's never interacted with me online before ever in the seven years I've been doing this. I, you know, not even like a fault, like I'm like, really girl, not even a follow on Instagram, not even a comment on the video. So when I get people reaching out who are asking me for help basically, and they've never interacted with me before, they, they don't subscribe, they've never even left a comment on a video. If you can't even do that first before reaching out and asking me for a favor, that really tells me a lot about you and who you are. So, yeah. So just also for some context, um, I briefly looked at their channel. I have never, like, I don't, I'm not really interested in this business's stuff. I don't really care about what they do. Again, it's fine, whatever, you do you. But, I, you know, this would not be a business I would be interested in collaborating with, associating with. I just don't care. Like, you know, they can do what they want. I'm not interested in what they sell. Um, they have a substantially smaller channel than me. Again, I'm not trying to sound arrogant. I have over double the subscribers of this other channel, and I have about five times as many views. So just to put this into context, when she said, hey, we could help each other out and we could share with what we've learned along the way, if you really look at this objectively, if, we're, if we were to have a conversation and chat about what we've learned, who do you think would bring more to the table in this discussion? Would it be the person with the substantially smaller channel and less experience? Or would it be the person with the much larger channel and a lot more views? Like, when I saw this, I'm like, I don't know how you could help me. Like, and also, they're the ones reaching out to me. I'm not reaching out to them. So clearly, if they're reaching out to me, they're the ones that want something. And they're the ones that want to talk to me. So, you know, I... Like, when they say, when, like, that's what I mean by women taking advantage of other women, but they kind of try to disguise it into, hey, we're helping each other out, when it's really, it's one person asking for another person's help, and it's a very unequal exchange of value. This transaction would not be very mutually beneficial. Very clearly, this is one-sided. I think it's, uh, it was very obvious to me it was. I would hope that this person also realizes that this is also a very one-sided situation. And I want to ask this person, did you think about what the value is to me when you reached out? Like what I would, like what, what the benefit is to me? You're the one reaching out to help for me. Why would I take a half an hour out of my day from my business to talk to you if there's zero value proposition to me? I don't know. So that's just one question I have. The, so this person has a much smaller channel than I do. They don't have very, like, honestly, they don't have that many videos. Like, I have about 500 videos. A lot of sewing channels do not have as many videos. Uh, so, and I also have um, four monetized, I've gotten four channels monetized. I have multiple channels that I work on. I've done very successful work for a client. I have a production background. Um, so... You know, I can see why people want to talk to me about it, but I want to ask in return what, like, I don't, you know, I don't, but they have to understand, I don't really get a lot out of this exchange. So they have a much smaller channel than I do. I looked at their Instagram following. They have a bigger Instagram following than me, but here's the thing. I don't really give a shit about Instagram. 
I'm on it minimally, minimally. I put pretty minimal effort into Instagram. It's okay for some reasons. I just haven't really gotten a lot out of the platform. So I'm not, I'm not very focused on it. I don't care about getting more followers on Instagram. It's not something, I think out of all of the platforms I've done, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, far and away, YouTube knocks everyone out of the park. I have gotten so much more out of YouTube than any of the others combined by a lot. So the fact that this other business has more Instagram followers to me doesn't mean anything. Also, like there's really not much they can offer me from business standpoint because I don't agree with the business model they do. I don't like it. I don't like what they sell. So even though they might have more experience with that particular type of business, that's not something that I'm interested in because I don't want, I really just don't, you know, that's not the type of business I want to run. Uh, so, but again, yeah, I don't know. So in the email, they said they wanted to, okay, so in the email, this person said, I don't know any sewing YouTubers and I'm hoping just to have someone to talk to about it. You know, they just, they just want someone to talk to about YouTube, you know? Well, here's my question. Okay, one, I looked at your channel. Uh, this person lied. Uh, I looked at their channel and I kind of figured, I, all right, I kind of figured out what's really going on. When I looked at their channel, they had very recently done interviews on their channel with two other YouTubers that are much bigger than me. So these are people that have far bigger of a platform, far bigger of a following, and they had done this channel. So her line about not knowing any other sewing YouTubers, like that's not true because clearly you know these other YouTubers because you just had them on their channel, your channel. So yeah, what's up? So I just wanna ask, what's up with that? What is up with that? You said you don't know any other YouTubers, yet you just had other YouTubers on your channel, you were there talking to them. You clearly have contact information for them. So, you know, if you don't know any other YouTubers, may, you know, you could talk to them about it. The other thing they said was that, um, let's see here. Here's what I think is going on. So I think, and I've seen a lot of channels, not just in the sewing realm, I've seen other YouTubers do this in general. They think that they can sort of piggyback on bigger creators by just like collaborating with them. Be like, hey, you know, if I have so-and-so on my channel, I'm going to get a bunch of subscribers. All of their subscribers are going to come over and subscribe to our channel. So I think what this person is doing is they are trying to kind of, um, I, I suspect they are trying to sort of get their foot in the door and uh, connect with a bunch of other YouTubers that have much bigger channels than them so that they can use our audiences to grow their channel. You know, fuck that shit. I'm just gonna tell you, fuck that shit. I don't, I do not like that. I hate when I see channels that do that and they wanna, they wanna sort of piggyback or ride the coattails of some other creator that's bigger than them to grow their channel. Okay, one, I think this is a very poor strategy for your own YouTube channel. Uh, you know, if I'm gonna give you advice, don't do that. Uh, I think, it's very cringe to do that for one. Also, I don't think those strategies tend to work. Uh, the interviews they had on their channel with the bigger YouTubers really didn't have that many views. And you know why? It's because if one, like there, there's a lot of issues with it, but if someone wants to see the big influencer, they're just gonna go over to their own channel. The other thing is even if you get on a bigger creator's channel, the, the conversion rate back to you is going to be ridiculously low. It's not going to be worth it. In my opinion, instead of trying to clout chase and piggyback off of other people, the best thing you can really do for your own YouTube channel, and this is honest advice, is make the best videos you can yourself. All of my top performing videos that have gotten me the most subscribers and the most traffic None of them were collaborations. None of them were interviews. None of them really mentioned another personality or another brand. Really, like all of them were, like I just made good videos and people liked the videos. But I can say this from personal experience. I have not had really any 
I have not had any video where I was interviewing somebody else or done any sort of collaborations. None of them have done particularly well. And I've noticed that on a lot of other channels as well. So that would not be my strategy for building a YouTube channel. Again, to the person who emailed me, you do you, you can do whatever you want, uh, but I am not going to enable you in that pursuit. I'm not going to participate and I'm not going to encourage other people to do that because I don't think that's a very good strategy. And to people in the YouTube space, I'll say this, it's kind of considered cringe to do, to do that. Generally, if you're doing collaborations, it's recommended that you try to reach out to other creators that have like a similar size channel or even like a little bit smaller. But if a channel with 500,000 subscribers gets a collaboration request from a channel with 1,500 subscribers, it's considered kind of unprofessional and cringe. Like you're, it's kind of an unspoken rule that you don't really do that. So when I've done interviews here on the channel or collaborations, I don't reach out to bigger creators. I, I reach out to people who either don't have a YouTube channel or if they do, it's typically much smaller than mine because I, I don't want to have that appearance that I'm clout chasing. I also think it's cringe and I don't, I don't want someone who's a larger creator than myself to feel or get any sort of appearance that I'm using them or that I'm trying to ride their coattails. I don't think that's cool. I, I think there are much better ways of growing a YouTube channel. And that's what I suspect this woman is doing. Uh, she seems to be reaching out to people with much bigger channels than her and hopes that, you know, like she'll be able to kind of you like get, get you know, get, get them to tell her uh, what they've done, you know, share some of the insider secrets. And I think she's hoping to, uh, basically use other people to grow her channel. And I, I don't think that's cool. If you see channels like that, again, here's my issue with a lot of these sewing podcasts and sewing interview shows is that none of them are, in my opinion, most of them are just not very good. Uh, I don't, especially with the podcast, I think sewing is such a visual medium. If you're not doing a video podcast at the very least, uh, yeah, I don't understand why anyone's doing an audio only podcast in 2023. You should at the very least have a video podcast you put on YouTube and then you rip the audio for uh, those audio platforms. Uh, but like most of the, most of the interviews I've seen done where it's like, where it's like an interview channel and they just interview people, unless you have like a specific topic or something that's really hot, if you're just doing generic interviews, like and I've gotten a lot of those requests and I don't do them. It's like, you know, like I'll get a request. They'll be like, we want to have you on our uh, podcast to talk about your journey, you know, blah, blah, blah. How you got into sewing. Uh, like that just doesn't interest me. I think they're really boring. And it's my issue is that everyone's doing that. So it's like very nothing about that is innovative or unique or different or very like appealing to viewers. So like I see a lot of people doing that, not just in the sewing space, but in general with all, everyone has a podcast now. And I think it's, I think podcasts have also jumped the shark, but that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. But the thing with all like getting like people being like, blah, blah, blah. We just want to have on all of these sewing personalities. They're boring as shit. I'm sorry. Most of these people do not ask good questions. They're not fun. They're not funny. They're not entertaining. They're really, really, really dull. And I hate to say this, but most of the people I see doing these do not have interview skills. They do not have on camera charisma, personality. It's missing. So I'm sorry. But if you are trying to do that type of channel, please know that if you want to build an audience and you really want this to be a thing, it, it's got to be like far and beyond better than anything else people see. Otherwise, you're just going to be yet another podcaster that interviews people and no, that nobody watches. Um, so yeah, I think this woman's MO is that she's, she seems to be reaching out to YouTubers with a bigger channel, trying to get them on her channel or trying to quote unquote, do the pick your brain thing. Um, instead of putting in the work herself. And that just really, that really rubbed me the wrong way. Um, so the other thing that really bothered me is the fact that, um, 
Nowhere in her email did she offer any help. Her, like, she never offered, like, she didn't say anything like, hey, if there's anything else I could help you with or anything else we can do to help each other out, here are some areas that perhaps I could offer value to you. There was no language in there like that. She also kind of assumed, like, this is the funny thing. She kind of assumed that me talking to her about YouTube would be helpful to me. It's not, you know. And, the, like, that's the thing. It was a very selfish email. I read through the lines. Her saying, let's share what we've learned along the way, translates to, I want you to tell me everything you know about YouTube so I can grow a channel without putting in all of the hard work you've put into your channel. No thanks, lady. No thanks. So that's kind of what I've experienced a lot with fellow business owners. And it's very disappointing, especially because I feel like outwardly all of these people on social media in the sewing influencer realm, outwardly everyone's like, let's support each other. You know, girl power, female empowerment, women supporting women, support small businesses. But then when you look at what people actually do, I'm sorry, but if you're asking another business to do free work for you or to give you a free consult, you're not actually supporting another small business. You're trying to take from another small business without paying them anything. That's, that's kind of cringe to me. Uh, you know, they, yeah, I, I can't even get, like, and the reason I don't want to, like, just totally name this person in the company is because this is in this is one symptom of a bigger problem. This has happened to be over and over again from different businesses, and mainly it's women that are putting in these types of ridiculous requests without even th and that's the thing they don't even think what value can I bring to the person I'm asking for a favor from? What do I have to offer? And if there's nothing you have to offer that's actually valuable to the other person, then you need to pay them. And you need to upfront offer. Like if this person has said, hey, I love what you've done with your channel, you know, congratulations on 100K. I'd love to talk to you about YouTube. You know, how much would you charge? Or, you know, could we, could we pay you for your time? If they had written something like that, I probably would have been fairly open to it. But the, the way that this email was worded, it was so, like, ridiculously cringe and just very, like, stupid. I was like, I'm not, I didn't even write back. And that's the thing I've learned. If you write back to them, they kind of feel like they've got a foot in the door. And then they try to, like, it's like they try to argue with you or, like, try to change your mind. Like, oh, you know, but hey, we can do this for you. If you're sending me an email like that right off the bat... I don't want to waste any time trying to talk to you. Like, I already know from the get-go this is not going to go well for me. This is not worth my time. So if you send messages like that, I'm just going to tell you outright, you're not getting a response. I'm not going to associate with you, and I'm never going to help you in any way. So I just want to kind of talk about that because I think it's become a, a fairly large issue within this particular niche and I you know I think it sucks like I've been really disappointed by my experiences with fellow female business owners so if you really want to help out a fellow female business owner uh, watch their you know buy their products actually interact with them online subscribe to their YouTube channel you know follow each other on Instagram this woman didn't even do that like, she just immediately sent an email and asked me for a favor. And that really just irritated the hell out of me. So, I'm just like, yeah. So, and you know what? The funny thing is, I could already tell when I saw, like, the social media for the business, this is the same type of business that's going to be posting infographics all over Instagram and Facebook on how people should support small businesses and they're the same type of person that would use the I'm a small business card uh, to kind of elicit sympathy or try to guilt people into buying their stuff because they're a small business, you know? Well, I'm here to tell you, if you're a small business and you're not offering people value and your product sucks, I don't care how big or small your business are is. I don't think anyone has, has to feel any 
motivation or like I don't think anyone has any obligation to buy your stuff if you if it's not good so I don't care what kind of label you put on the business like but that just like the fact that it's those type of people that are like you know women you know like they're the same type of people that are like that would post a lengthy caption like women really need to support other women or whatever but then their behavior really tells me everything I need to know because in this situation uh, this female owned business wanted to uh, take from another an even smaller business without compensation or without an equal exchange of value and I feel like too much of those types of interactions are happening without an actual mutually beneficial situation or without an equal exchange of value and the worst part of it is that they're trying to do it and disguise it as just helping each other out look and I think I again I know I can get a little ranty uh, I did post about this on Instagram and one of the viewers here Megan who's great by the way she actually posted a good response she said uh, let me read let me find it because it's real it was really good okay so Megan said so with me I feel like a lot of people use helping each other out as an excuse to take advantage of each other especially women business planning advertising quality testing are a business arrangement that needs to be compensated it's really disappointing when your labor and experience are expected for free and that's exactly it she really nailed it on the head we're getting too many small businesses who are trying to take advantage of other small businesses when really like this is not a conversation you know this isn't just a conversation between friends this is really a business situation that needs to be like an actual business arrangement so I feel like a lot of these people especially in the sewing and quilting space are trying to kind of go in like oh this is just a casual thing we're just chatting you know when they're really trying to pick your brain uh, to get business advice and again that that's what really bothered me is that I felt like this person was trying to kind of hide it like you know I just want a YouTube friend just someone to chat about YouTube well I want to ask you a question to the lady who emailed me did you if you wanted a YouTube friend would you have reached out to a YouTube channel with 2,000 subscribers 500 subscribers why are you only reaching out to YouTubers who have a much bigger channel than you? Why aren't you reaching out to people with the same size channel, a similar size channel? If I had 5,000 subscribers, would you, would you have reached out to me? I think we all know the answer is no. This person is only interested in getting as much as they can extracting value from other people without providing value to those people. And the way that that email was worded said exactly that. So that bothered me, but the problem is that that's not the only time this has happened to me. This happens to me pretty frequently, and I, like, I would hate to think that this person, like, if this person genuinely doesn't understand or have the self-awareness to realize that the, these types of correspondence are not appropriate, that's pretty sad. If they do, it's almost even worse because it's like they know they know what they're doing and they're doing it because they think they can get away with it or because they think it's going to work. Um, so that's what's been kind of going on this week. And, you know, I thought I would chat about this. I, I think if you really want to support small businesses, women owned businesses, buy their products, watch their videos, do things like that. And also maybe send them a note and just say, hey, I really like your stuff without asking them for a favor. Oh, and the other thing is that I think, so one, the timing of this was kind of suspicious to me. Okay, so they sent the email a couple days ago. I had recently just posted some stuff with me and my 100,000 subscriber plaque, and I have had a few people come out of the woodwork since then. So I think the timing of that was pretty interesting. Also, in the video that she was referencing where I talked about uh, some of my own challenges with the sewing report channel and with the sewing report brand I had mentioned I talked quite a bit about the consultation I had done with the YouTube guy and the other thing about this is that the timing of the email happened to be right after Instagram announced that it was discontinuing the Instagram reels bonus program and this particular woman's business happens to have their biggest following on Instagram. 
So I don't want to speculate, but I'm just saying, maybe I, I think that this person was probably, I think this person's business was probably making some income from Instagram Reels. So if you're not aware, certain creators on Instagram were invited to the Instagram Reels bonus program. So that's why you've been seeing so many Instagram Reels and everyone's tired of them. Depending on how many views all of your Instagram Reels got, Instagram would pay you out a bonus based on views. I was making about $40 a month, nothing to write home about. But if you're a bigger Instagram account and your Reels got more views, you know, you could get, I think the max was $1,200 a month. So this person's business Instagram account has over 100,000 followers on Instagram. Um, but again, like I said, I find Instagram to be like not that great in terms of my, you know, anything really. So it's interesting to me that this person sent the email right after I had gotten 100,000 subscribers, right after Instagram had announced that they were getting rid of the bonus program. So this business will not have the revenue from the Instagram bonus program. Plus I had talked about doing a, getting advice from a YouTube consultation. Um, so I'm kind of thinking the timing of this might mean something. And I also think this person probably saw that video and wanted to, I think they wanted the information I got from the YouTube consultation. That's what I think. Um, the information I, I think they wanted, I think they really wanted to get, they wanted to pick my brain as a TV, an ex TV producer. I think they wanted to get some of the info I got during a consultation I paid for. Look, lady, if you want YouTube, if you want a YouTube consultation, pay for it yourself. Like, buy it yourself. You have 11 employees and a full time videographer. I think you can afford to shell out money for a YouTube consultation instead of trying to hit up someone who did pay for one herself and try to get that information for free. That's just tacky to me. So that's, that's what I wanted to say about it, but I'm a little bit annoyed with that whole thing. Um, so if you are watching this, I'm going to clip this part for uh, this channel so that people can watch just this portion. But if you are watching this and you've, you're, you're thinking about reaching out to myself or another person, uh, one, if you just wanna make a genuine connection with anyone, don't ask for anything in the first interaction. Two, if you're trying to grow a YouTube channel, do not base it on getting, on siphoning other creators' audiences. Build it yourself, create good videos. And, and three, I'm really just freaking sick of small businesses expecting and feeling entitled to other businesses' labor and time for free. That should not be happening. I think these types of interactions need to stop. And if you do reach out to me with this type of nonsense, just know that I am not going to be responding.